In this video, I want to show you guys how we can detect malicious command and control activity all through the Sock Fortress stack. And the best part about the Sock Fortress stack is that it is backed by open source software, which means no licensing fees to you and your clients. Let's jump into our EDR summary page to get a high level overview of alerts across our endpoints within our environment. Upon loading the page, I see a Windows endpoint that has been tagged with some alerts. We see some potentially some dodgy PowerShell commands where we're getting an execution bypass flag. And we're also seeing some malicious DNS requests go out from this endpoint. Let's go ahead and check out this DNS query first. So if I select my dropdown and I select my view event details, I will now have, I will now be filtered on that specific event. And if we drop this down here, we see that a DNS request has been made to evil.sockfortress.co it resolved to this specific IP address and it was invoked by the ping executable on our Windows endpoint as you see here. This DNS request was flagged because a positive hit has been detected within OpenCTI, which is our threat intel provided with the Sock Fortress stack. So let's go ahead and investigate a little more into this potential IOC. So opening up our threat intel, we see that sure enough, evildocsockfortress.co exists within our threat intel stack and resolves to our IP address 5.161. 59.147. Let's head back to our landing page and look at our firewall logs to collect just how many times traffic has been sent out to this specific IP address. Here we immediately identify our IP address. So let's go ahead and filter on that. And here we see, wow, a bunch of hits over this time frame, and then a massive spike. So Potentially, this was some beaconing activity, and then all of a sudden, the command and control server now issued it commands to go ahead and run, and that caused the massive jump in traffic that we see out to our malicious IP address. We see some HTTP traffic, and then we also see some file-related traffic, so that could be interesting. We may want to dig into that further. And we also see the destination port that our endpoint was connecting to. So 8888, that seems pretty abnormal to me. Let's go ahead and investigate further and see what exactly the process was that was spawning these beacons out to our command and control server. So back in our landing page, let's go ahead and open our DNS request because we know in our original alert, a DNS request was made out to evil.sockfortress.co. So if we select our DNS request dashboard and let's go ahead and filter on our DNS query evil.sockfortress.co. So we load. So the dashboard loads with all of that relevant data that pertains to this specific domain. So scrolling down here, let's actually detect what processes have been seen connecting to this domain. Well, here we see our ping, and then we also see the sandcat.go-windows.exe. Now, I'm not really familiar with what that executable is, but it doesn't sound good upon first glance. Let's go now explore what other high fidelity alerts have also occurred on this Windows endpoint. So if we go into our Explore tab here, I will go ahead and select Logs so I can view the raw logs of my events. And let's go ahead and add our filter for anything that is a level of alert. So we also see some PowerShell execution policy bypass flag set. So if we look at the command line, here we actually see the command that installed the payload. So here we see our reach out, our endpoint reach out to evil.sockfortress.co on our port. And then we also get back what was written to the host. Hey, we've successfully completed this execution. And we actually do see the parent image of this process being our executable. We also detect on a binary file being dropped in the user's public folder. That is generally not the case with normal day-to-day -day operations. And then we also have some malicious PowerShell commandlets being invoked as well. And scrolling down further, we can also see it in a easier to read format. And here we could actually go through the payload 
in clear text for our own understanding. Jumping into our case management platform, let's now do some actual incident collection and potentially some response capabilities if we deem that we need to do so. The SOC Fortress stack automatically created a case for us where it saw a network connection out by PowerShell. And we also get some MITRE enrichment all a part of the summary. If we go into our assets tab, we also see what asset was affected by this alert. So here we see our Windows endpoint, we get the internal IP address, and we get a description of the operating system that this endpoint is running. Heading into our IOC tab, we see any IOCs related to this specific alert, and that could be domains, IP addresses, file hashes. But in this case, we see our good friend evil.sockfortress.co. So let's actually select this guy and let's go ahead and ask Sock Fortress what we should do in terms of how should I investigate a domain and what maybe actions I can take to block traffic to this particular domain. So after running our Ask Sock Fortress module, we get our Ask Sock Fortress report. Now, here we get some high level steps of as a SOC analyst, this is what you should look for when it comes to investigating domains. I also have technical steps. In my instance, I'm running a PFSense firewall. And so now we are detailing steps of how you could actually blacklist a domain on a PFSense firewall. Now, I'm not only collecting as a SOC analyst, okay, what should I investigate further, but how could I actually take steps to stop this malicious activity until I reach my conclusion? And going into our timeline of our case, we also get the full kill chain of all activity that has happened for this specific alert which is really helpful because now we're not having to jump back and forth between the case management platform and the visualization platform. We, as a SOC analyst, I get all of my details within the case management tool. Going back to our asset, let's actually now hunt for that specific binary, which is our sandcat.go-windows-executable because we may want to see, okay, is this a valid binary that has been signed by a reputable vendor or any other details that may be a better indication of this is not a trusted binary. So let's go ahead and run our Velociraptor artifact to go ahead and hunt for our binaries on our endpoint. And we now get our report for our binary hunter has been completed. So if we go ahead and select this tab here, we will now be able to view the raw results of our collection. Let's go ahead and search for our Sandcat executable. And here we see the beginning block of our Sandcat. And here we don't see that it is signed by any vendors. We also see that it is a non-trusted binary. And we're also collecting hash values as well. So we can investigate even further. And if you compare this to a more, more reputable software such as Notepad++, you can see that the vendor information is all present. So we now have identified that yes, this is a malicious process and this host is in fact infected. Let's go ahead and actually quarantine the endpoint. There's no potential for any lateral movement and this will completely isolate the endpoint from the network. After I run my quarantine, we will see that I will now lose my RDP session onto my Windows box because we went ahead and actually quarantined the device. And here we go. We have now quarantined the device and it can now no longer connect to anything on the network, either internally or externally. However, the nice touch is that it still can communicate with Velociraptor. So. Let's go ahead and remove our quarantine and restore our daily operations. And now we will see that I get my connection back to my endpoint established here. So that is just one example of investigating an alert on the SOC Fortress stack. There will be many more to come. So stay tuned and be on the lookout for these types of videos. And the best part again about our stack is that it is all backed by open source tools. And I appreciate you guys time and I will see you in the next one.